Hi, it ain't brain surgery. I love how we measure the difficulty of everything versus brain surgery. Hey, it ain't brain surgery. It ain't brain surgery. What do brain surgeons say? Like, hey, it ain't like we're trying to talk to women. <laughs> hey, I'm a brain surgeon, buddy. I didn't appreciate that. He made me uncomfortable. Went to the drugstore. They sell everything in drugstores. I remember when it's just like drugs and deodorant. Now you're like, well, I got this cholesterol medication. I guess I'll get some ice cream. A uh, king-size Snickers and a casket. <laughs> it's an interesting dynamic in the drugstore, right? Because there's the people that work on the drugstore floor that always seem like they want to quit or kill themselves. <laughs> and then there's the pharmacist in the back in that glass cage in a white lab coat like they're the wizard. <laughs> in commercials, the pharmacist is always the nicest guy on earth. Hey, how you doing? This prescription's on me. In reality, doesn't it always seem like you're inconveniencing the pharmacist? They're always like, what do you want? I was working on my time machine. <laughs> I, I need these pills. Yeah, it's gonna be like five hours. Why don't you go and sit on that metal chair across from the condoms? <laughs> you ever sit on that metal chair? It's humiliating. People always say, yeah, what kind of disease does he have? <laughs> I got a lot of them. Just hanging out with the condoms. <laughs> I don't understand what the wait's for. Why does it take five hours to put six pills in an orange cup? <laughs> what are they trying to hit it from like 10 feet away? <laughs> Tell them to come back. <laughs> now I know I'm a pharmacist, not a basketball player. It was crazy. You know, the, the surgeon told me the tumor was the size of a pear, which is scary, but also confusing. I was like, did he go to med school or a farmer's market? <laughs> but tumors are often compared to fruit. A pear, a lemon, a grapefruit. Interesting fact, worst tumor, grapefruit. Worst fruit, grapefruit. <laughs> when well, you think about it, a grapefruit looks more like a tumor than a fruit. I almost feel sorry for grapefruit. Yeah, we can't win, yeah? We're already the worst fruit, now we're compared to the worst tumor? Well, at least we help old people poop. That is the worst impression of a grapefruit ever. It's kind of unfortunate that there's another fruit that's much smaller named grape. Because you know there's situations in doctor's offices, we found a tumor, it's the size of a grape. Thank God, I didn't finish. <laughs> Grapefruit. Oh, that's, that's very different. <laughs> it was strange, you know, when, when the doctor told me the tumor was the size of a pear, I thought, wow, I guess doctors are bad at analogies. But I quickly realized they're just dumbing it down for idiots like me. Like the surgeon looked at me and thought, well, this guy's not gonna understand centimeters. I don't even wanna try and explain circumference. Based on appearance, he doesn't eat fruit, but he's probably seen a pear when he's at the grocery store buying ice cream. They say laughter is the best medicine, and it is, after you've received real medicine <laughs> from a real medical professional. Prior to that, you don't want any laughter. You don't want a doctor giggling during an exam. Oh my gosh, this is your body? <laughs> oh, nice man boobs. <laughs> my wife was in surgery for 10 hours. And before the surgery, the surgeon told me, he goes, halfway through, I'll probably stop and get lunch. <laughs> I don't need to know that. <laughs> Why even tell me that? Was he afraid I was gonna run into him in the cafeteria? <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> I get these cravings. <laughs> Those Snickers commercials are true. <laughs> but he was a great brain surgeon. 
We learn later on that he's like the best. I don't know how they determine the best brain surgeon. You know, maybe there's a competition. <laughs> America's got tumors. <laughs> Heidi Klum thought he was the best. The best brain surgeon. Isn't it enough that someone's a brain surgeon? <laughs> None of us could even get in med school. <laughs> A brain surgeon goes to medical school, afterwards specializes in neurology, after that specializes in surgery of the brain, and we're like, yeah, but are they any good? <laughs> yeah, they're a brain surgeon. <laughs> you know what they do with the bad brain surgeons? They don't let them become brain surgeons. <laughs> Can you imagine the pressure on a brain surgeon? At no point during their workday can they say, hey, it ain't brain surgery. Because <laughs> it's always brain surgery. Every day. What you do at work, honey? Brain surgery. <laughs> That's fun. You want some fruit? Never. <laughs> My wife had a, she had an amazing team of doctors. She had the brain surgeon. She also had an ear, nose, and throat doctor. Your nose and throat, that kind of sounds like they didn't make the cut for brain surgeon. <laughs> I want to be a brain surgeon. You know what? Let's stick with the ears, nose, and throat. <laughs> You'd be better with the things surrounding the brain. <laughs> Can I have the eyes? You know what? Let's stick with the ears, nose, and throat. <laughs> we promised the eyes to the nerd at Lens Crafters. <laughs> Why pick on optometrists? Those ear, nose, and throat doctors, they must look at dentists and think, just teeth? That's it? What about the tongue? Not the tongue, just the teeth. <laughs> you just work on teeth? Surgery on teeth? Oh, I don't do the surgery. That's the orthodontist. I mostly scrape stuff off of teeth <laughs> while I listen to 80s music. <laughs> I love Debbie Gibson. <laughs> when you think about it, dentists, they don't do the surgery. They don't even clean the teeth. They're like, you guys do everything, and then I'll come in and jab them with a sharp object. <laughs> Oh, I listen to Debbie. <laughs> I did figure out what type of doctor I would want to be, which is an anesthesiologist. Because just once, I'd like to walk in a room and go, Hi, I'm Dr. Gaffigan. I'm going to give you some drugs so you can't talk or move. <laughs> and one of these strangers is going to cut you open. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> what draws someone to anesthesiology? It's like, I like medicine, but I really enjoy getting people high. <laughs> if I can combine the two. I also prefer to sit during surgery. <laughs> you ever see the anesthesiologist during surgery? They're always sitting there like, mm, I don't even know why I have to be here. <laughs> yeah, they're still alive. <laughs> Anyone got the Wi-Fi password? <laughs> newfound respect for doctors, I do. Because when you think about it, unless we're sick, we listen to absolutely nothing doctors tell us. They're like, you should lose weight. Never gonna happen. <laughs> what else you got? You, you should exercise. Does eating french fries count? <laughs> Get out of my office. I don't even listen when I bring my kids to the doctor. The doctor's like, to avoid an infection. I'm like, duh, 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 duh. <laughs> My wife's like, what'd the doctor say? Don't pick the scab. <laughs> I don't listen to nerds. <laughs> that was the only time I would ever see a doctor is when I bring my kids in. Sometimes I'd try and horn in on a pediatric appointment. The doctor would be like, how's little Mikey doing? Mikey's good, he's good. He's a little worried about this mole I have on my arm. <laughs> Yeah, I explained to Mikey that I've always had the mole, but Mikey thinks it might have changed colors. <laughs> Jim, would you like to make an appointment? No, it's Mikey. He just needs a thumbs up or a thumbs down on the mole. <laughs> I know Mikey doesn't want to play the Hippocratic Oath card, but you have to tell us, don't you? <laughs> I hope it doesn't sound like I'm picking on her, because I'm grateful to have her in my life. It's nice to have a partner, someone looking out for you. You look out for them. Like I did two weeks of shows out of town in December, and when I came home, my wife informed me that she made me an appointment for the gastroenterologist. <laughs> if you're unfamiliar, that's the doctor that sticks the camera up your butt. <laughs> I mean, 
they do other things, but that's what they're famous for. <laughs> that's probably how they attract people to the field. You like photography? <laughs> and I got a job you're gonna love. <laughs> I didn't ask my wife to set up this appointment. I wasn't sick, I didn't have any symptoms. She just did it because she was looking out for me. So she casually brought it up. She goes, just so you know, I made you an appointment for the gastroenterologist. And I said, just so you know, I won't be going. <laughs> She's like, why wouldn't you go? It's just a consultation. I said, well, it's the principal. I'm an adult. I make my own decisions. Thank you. Anyway, so I'm at the gastroenterologist. <laughs> the doctor starts to describe the procedure. And I said, look, I should probably let you know, I don't really enjoy getting my picture taken. I would be open to an ultrasound. I think a lot of men are curious what the jelly on the belly feels like. <laughs> anyway, the doctor, he didn't think it was funny. <laughs> and I knew it was precautionary, so I agreed. So he went over to his computer and he goes, all right, my next available appointment is in three months. And I was like, three months? This was in December. I didn't know if I wanted this procedure hang over my head during the holidays. Jim, you want another piece of pie? No, I'm getting a camera up my butt. I don't want some team of doctors to be like, wow, this guy loves pie. Mary, get out here. He's got a half a pie up there. I didn't know what could delay this important procedure, but part of me didn't want to find out. I didn't want the doctor to be like, well, the real delay is finding someone to clean the camera. I take it. Turnover in that position's insane. You know, people do it once and they're like, you know what, I'm going back on food stamps. <laughs> then I was thinking, maybe it's the doctor. Maybe he's like, dude, I can only do this procedure once a month. <laughs> then I gotta take a week off, sit on the beach, and ask myself why I keep sticking cameras up people's butts. <laughs> I could have been a dentist. <laughs> Again with the dental reference. <laughs> But in February, I had the procedure, and I think every man in here should get a colonoscopy, because I had to. <laughs> it's not an easy decision, because the best news you can find out from getting a camera stuck up your butt is learning you didn't need to have a camera stuck up your butt. <laughs> That's the best news. Yeah, we didn't need to do that. <laughs> we can just chalk that up, one for fun. <laughs> The surgeon who removed my appendix, his name was Dr. Muffaletta, <laughs> which is also the name of a delicious New Orleans sandwich. <laughs> and I do look like a guy who would know that. So when he introduced himself, I was like, am I being visited by the ghost of Sandwich Past? <laughs> is Nurse Po'boy about to come in? <laughs> I woke up after the surgery covered in Mardi Gras beads. No, I woke up and there was a nurse standing there and she was like, the surgery was a success. Just let me know if it hurts when you pee. And I was like, Where, where's the appendix? How exactly did you remove it? This doesn't sound like a success at all. Then she explained right before the surgery, they inserted a catheter. I didn't know what that was. So I was like, oh, okay. Then I started piecing it together. Hurts when I pee, catheter. I'm suing this hospital. <laughs> You'll be hearing from my lawyer doctor. <laughs> what monsters, if given a choice of peeing all over myself or having a tube inserted in my penis, I'll take the pee shower. <laughs> I guess I'm old fashioned, you know? Hi, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you want. If you want to see more stand up, I have more stand-up, or if you want to see an original show like Let's Get Cooking or The Mike and Pat Show, that's available on my channel. But also, just know that I'll be posting a new video every day during this pandemic or until the world ends. Please hit subscribe and turn on your alert or notification button.